I'm very happy to welcome on stage here on my left hand, Rashita Kulkarni. She's the president of the World Forum for Ethics in Business, which is uh, headquartered in Brussels. Very much welcome. Thank you for a small applause or a bigger applause for Rashita. <laughs> on my right hand, I have Tony Lanier. She's the executive director of Impact 2030, comes from New York. Thank you very much for being with us here. The topic, and you could derive this from the function of the two ladies I have here, is what is the role of private sector in, the, in, in, in goaling for, for, for the SDGs? I think that when you look at the whole campaign on development of the SDGs and the question, um, how can we bring it on the road uh, when it was drafted by the, uh, the high-level group, the experts groups, and so on. One major question was, who is going to pay for all that? And how to involve all these who are not mandated by an official body like a government or uh, the UN? Uh, and obviously, uh, the, the whole business sector must be part of the game. Uh, you cannot achieve all these goals by public means only. But the question here is, uh, more than a year after the, the signature of this uh, framework of the SDGs, the, the, the question here is, is the, public, the private sector by now, is the private sector on board, yes or not? You will hold on to the mic? I will okay. Hold on, yes. <laughs> uh, I think there is a great amount of awareness and also interest in the private sector today to, uh, to be a part of the communities that they are uh, working in because uh, I think the uh, private sector recognizes we are living in an interdependent world. So until uh, all my stakeholders are prosperous, there is little chance that uh, me as an organization can be prosperous in a long term. So I think that awareness is quite high. I can say that with confidence. Would you say that this awareness is uh, taking to, uh, or leading to action, or is that a major step? Being aware is one thing, but taking action is a second thing. Well, I'd like to say that transformational change requires a multi-stakeholder approach. And actually, that's what the SDGs is asking us to do. So the voice of business actually needs to be there. And I think business is really good at doing things. Now that they have the level playing field, which is actually the SDGs, it's, give, it's quite clear, it's quite concise, and also quite simple, companies can then say, okay, how do we manage to focus on those issues that we can bring value, where we can actually do something about? So yes, I think there is action. I understand that you can identify long-term goals by companies that make the match for the SDGs. I understand that. But on the other hand, as the US president said recently, I'm representing America and not the world. I mean, so would a business leader. He is representing its stakeholders. He is not supposed or mandated to heal the world. So, so why should they come in the picture? You know, I want to take the uh, SDG on peace here. Uh, I think any business leader who is a smart business leader, an intelligent business leader, will know that if there is no peace in the society, his business cannot prosper in that, in that society. So it is in the interest of the private sector to make sure that society around it prospers and vice versa. I don't think it's a one-way street, it's a two-way street and uh, I think that there is a, a huge amount of awareness in the world today of how flat we have become as, an, uh, as a world, how fast we uh, communicate with each other in microseconds. Uh, technology has really shrunk us into a tiny village and uh, I think it is wise to, uh, to recognize mm. this interdependence. I understand your point saying that they come on board because they understand that it is important, but nevertheless, let me come back to, the, to my former point. I'm afraid that uh, business is stronger than any international framework that is decided by politics right now. So how, how can the SDG, the SDG framework, how can we make it that strong that business cannot keep away from taking it serious? Well, I, I have to go back to my old job of being an investment banker. And actually, those that are running the companies are caretakers of the companies for the shareholders. And it's up to them to make sure that they uh, identify new opportunities 
for their businesses to understand the areas in which they, they're licensed to operate, if you would. And actually the SDGs is one way that they can do that, is look at where they can they add value, go out and identify those opportunities given what, um, what actually the UN through the SDGs. Have. You have an example? Well, I work specifically with Impact 2030 on corporate volunteering and how corporate volunteering can address the SDGs. And a corporate volunteer, whether you're Bank of America or you're Google, they have, they're in their own communities. They, start, they want to volunteer within their community. They understand what those communities are about, whether they're in Mexico or wherever they are. So they can actually take that information that they achieve as ambassadors for Google within their communities and bring it back to their company and say, actually, there is a need for X, Y, and Z. How can we tap into that and also do something good? So Google, for instance, it's about SDGs on their corporate volunteering field. Isn't the reality that some businesses are really relying on that kind of uh, effect in a variety of markets, and that's why they come along, but other businesses are, are not. And the main aim is that they can do businesses in the most free space without any regulation. But the, the SDGs is committing everybody to a huge set of different and very specific goals. So do you see, don't you see any conflict in that for a business leader? You know, I think it is great to have a structure. It's great to have a framework because it gives you some sort of a, a, a path, a, some sort of a roadmap on what we can, uh, what, what an organization or even an individual can do. At the same time, I think, you know, we were talking about it earlier that there are a huge number of organizations around the world, um, NGOs, not-for-profits, who are doing a huge amount of work, whether it's in the space of education, whether it's in the space of uh, climate change, clean water. Uh, I represent the Art of Living Foundation, the Umbrella Foundation, and uh, we are doing work in practically each one of the 17 uh, areas that have been identified in the SDGs with huge impact on the ground across 155 countries of the world, uh, close to half a billion people uh, having been directly impacted. Now, did we do that keeping the SDG framework in mind? No, because it started three and a half decades ago and the framework came now. So I think it's a bit of both. Mm -hmm. It's great to have a framework because then when you're starting off something new, it gives you a roadmap. Uh, at the same time, to, uh, I think the challenge is really uh, how we can assimilate and aggregate all the incredible work happening around the world with, from a zillion organizations uh, who are doing it under their own, with their own passion with yeah. their own vision, yeah. and then how does that add up to these, uh, you know, SDGs? I see your point. You, came, you told me earlier that you come from the perspective of being role models and not uh, pointing at people, but saying, okay, what is, what is a role model, what is a good practice, and so on. 30-second pitch to a business leader to why he has to come on board for the SDGs. Um, access to new and upcoming talent. Tal talented people want to know that your company is doing good. And how do you go about doing that? Align yourself with the SDGs and find your way where you can make uh, valuable, you can be valuable. So access to good people good, and good, good talent. Great. Thank you very much, Tony, for that elevator speech. <laughs> Great. Thank you. I'd also like to thank all of the volunteers that are here today because without them, this global uh, festival of ideas probably would not work as well. So I applaud you guys. You guys have done a really good job. Thank you. Thank you very much to the volunteers. Thank you uh, to you to being part of that discussion here. Uh, um, um, let me say, <laughs> Rashita. Rashita. I was with Amrita because I have a colleague that is Amrita Shima. With. Uh, Rashita, thank you very much uh, joining us on that stage here. Thank you very much for being with us. Next edition is tomorrow morning during the coffee break. Um, and I hope to see you back here for seven minutes for discussion in cooperation with the US, uh, the UN uh, Global Festival of Ideas and the UN Campaign and the Global Media Forum hosted by Deutsche Welle. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. You.